you know, it's much easier for me sitting in peaceful Vancouver, British Columbia um, to respond than somebody who's in a war zone. I lived in a war zone at various times in my life, but I don't live one in, in one right now. I think uh, the best we can do is to be really aware of all the pain in the world and not to believe that because at the moment we're spared it, that therefore we're not a part of it. We're all part of the same world and wherever we are, I think we need to respond to the ongoing injustices and um, oppressions and uh, inauthenticities and hypocrisies that govern so much of our world. How we do so is an individual decision. I can't advise others uh, how to do it, but what can I tell you? Um, I was born at a time when the Second World War was still going on. Um, then I lived through the Hungarian Revolution and emigration. Um, we were welcomed in Canada as Hungarian refugees even while the indigenous people here were still being oppressed and tormented. Human history never stops and uh, history is full of heaviness and uh, injustice. I think what enthuses me or inspires me is that despite that, when these events happen, we also see the goodness in humanity so the people in Poland, for example, are welcoming Ukrainian refugees into their homes. People in Hungary are doing the same. That speaks to the goodness of human beings. At the same time, there are millions of refugees from North Africa and in the Middle East that were sent into exile by policies of the Western powers those people are not being welcomed. Right. They're being put, barriers are being put up against them. And people who try to help them are being punished in Poland and in Hungary and in Greece and elsewhere. So we have to keep our hearts open, be inspired by the innate goodness of human beings, but also be aware of the contradictions. Right. I don't know any other way to be.